Hello everyone. This is Paul Lucas inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions. Proudly we hail. And now, another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, starring Paul Lucas, and presented transcribed coast-to-coast in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Paul Lucas. Thank you, Kenneth Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, our play is entitled Edge of the Curtain, the scene in New York, the time today. Our story, a tale of treachery here at home. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment after this short but very important message. The woman in the Air Force is a woman who has found that it's smart to serve her country. If you are between 18 and 34, Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and ask for details. Be smart. Do it now. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Edge of the Curtain. The Sea Queen, bound from La Havre to New York, had its fair share of noted celebrities, among whom was the renowned composer and pianist Stefan Donner. Stefan Donner, on his way to the United States for a concert tour, when only last month he had been royally welcomed in Moscow. It was said aboard ship that when he got to the United States, this cold, arrogant man would pay for his attitude. His concerts would be picketed and no one would come to hear him play. The consensus was it was about time, too. Had they but known the true reason for his voyage, their opinions would have been in a somewhat different vein. The reason had been voiced a week before by a man named Richards, who had unobtrusively seated himself next to the brooding donor on a park bench in a European city. Stefan, it's perfect. Why, it's the best break we've had in months. You are sure it isn't some kind of trick? We've checked, double-checked, cross-checked, rechecked. He just confessed everything without any trouble? I told you he was on the verge of a breakdown when we picked him up. Our picking him up did it. He thought we were going to give him the same kind of medicine they would give one of our men. If I do this, I'll eventually be in covered. I won't be any more use to you. Well, Stefan, I I admit it's a risk. But in this case, it's worth it. But won't they be expecting this other fellow you picked up? They don't know who's coming, just that someone is. Now, our people will be watching you all the time, just in case there's a slip-up. Well, I'd better go and tell the rink to start packing. Come around to the office at 8, and I'll give you everything you need. <laughs> the only thing I need, Richards, is a brand new head. Then I wouldn't let you talk me into such madness. That's their Statue of Liberty, sir. Uh, Save it for the immigrants. Statue of Liberty, indeed. (laughs) Sir, I wouldn't carry it too far. We might find ourselves swimming the rest of the way. Mm, Like Buckingham Palace, eh, Ring? Uh, Very palatial, sir. A sweet fit for a king. (laughs) Or the great Stefan Donner. How was I? I think you're overdoing it, sir. It seems that people here are more abrupt and, well, uh, direct in their actions. You mean I might get a punch in the nose? Uh, You might, sir. (laughs) Well, Ring, if that's all I get, I'll be getting off lightly. I don't imagine the press will be very kind to us. Well, they'll have cooled off by the time I give my first performance. There's a different feeling here, sir, not like in Europe. People here are not so passive. 
Amen to that. Well, it's time we got started. A simple telephone call and... Uh... Hello. Mr. Madden? Yes, this is Madden. My name is Donner. Stefan Donner. It's uh, possible you've heard of me. The musician? Yes, that is correct. A mutual friend of ours in Paris asked me to call you and give you his regards. Paul LaRouge. Paul La... You? You know Paul LaRouge? My dear sir, I wouldn't be taking the trouble to call you if I didn't. He asked me to tell you that he was well and that he'd like you to write. He suggested we might possibly get together. However, I'm very busy, as you can understand. Yes, of course. Still, if you're a friend of Paul's, you must find the time to pay me a call. Where are you staying? At the Waldorf. What about dinner tonight? No, I'm afraid not. I'm tired of my trip and I would like to get some rest. Uh, I'll try to make it Thursday night. Why don't you call me here Thursday morning? All right, Thursday then. Did uh, Paul happen to mention the money he owed me? Oh, yes, I knew there was something else. I'm so forgetful about money. He gave me something to give you. I was going to mail it to you, but... I'll wait, and if Thursday is all right, I'll give it to you then. That'll be perfectly all right. I look forward to meeting you, Mr. Donner. Although I must say that I'm somewhat surprised that you know Paul. I am sure that if you think it over, you'll realize it's not really so surprising. Until Thursday, then. Goodbye, Mr. Madden. And so begins the game. Like Beatles. Beatles? What Beatles? Ah, all these people, these cars. Oh, what a horrible place. Just New York, Donna. I read that they picketed your concert, that it was called off. Yes, the idiots. You think it was wise to make them dislike you? You've gotten a very bad press here. Do you think I wanted it? I was advised by Paul. I don't understand it. I say nothing so difficult to understand. Who would suspect a man who so openly flounced his disrespect for everything and everyone, especially a man like myself? Where are you taking me? My place on Long Island. It's quieter there. And we can talk about Paul. Hmm. You live in style, man. I try to. You like it? Hardly like a member of the proletariat. Members must have their leaders, and leaders in my end of the business have got to keep up appearances just like you. Sit there, it's a very comfortable chair. Mm. Most relaxing. Cigar? No, nothing. You brought the money Paul owes me? Of course. And uh, you, the letters? There, in the safe. Suppose we have a look at them. I'd like to count the money first. You people expect us to work miracles on nothing. We take considerable risk, and we produce considerable results, and for a pittance that is grudgingly paid out. Don't tell me your troubles, friend. I have my own, and my orders. Here is the money. Hmm. One, two, three, four... Hank, Hank, I... What the devil do you mean, barging in here without knocking? I am sorry, Hank. I didn't know. Hank, I... get out of here. Get out! I'm sorry. Will you please get out of here? And just who was that stupid female? Blame yourself for not locking the door. Who was she? Miriam Colby. But don't worry, she's all right. She won't say anything. What do you mean, she's all right? She, uh, she works for me on little thing. She doesn't know much. Lives down the road. Father's a big shot industrialist. She hates his guts. Everything he stands for. Devoted to the party. And you? I can't help that. She does what I tell her. She keeps her mouth shut. I don't like being seen here with you by anyone. It was arranged, I thought, that we would meet, exchange gifts, and go our separate ways. I tell you, it's all right. Now, let's have a look at the papers. How many people in your organization? Twenty-two, counting Miriam. Why? How many of them have met and know each other? None. They don't even know who I am. I keep in touch by phone and through ads. Then how is it this Colby woman knows what the others don't? I tell you, she doesn't know. Not really. She knows where my sympathies lie, but she thinks I'm in the propaganda end of it. 
Give me the papers. Now go count your money while I look these over. See here, Donna. You have no authority over me. Whatever I have to say about you to Paul will be of great importance. Count your money. Well, a tidy little bundle, madam. My opinion for you has gone up. Some of these are excellent. The plans for the new anti-tank gun, this radar blueprint, all excellent. But there is still one thing worrying me. And what would that be? How long did it take your people to procure this information? There's almost a year's work there. <laughs> and with little more than my asking for it, you hand it over to me. What do you mean? How do you know I am not an imposter? How do you know I am really a friend of Paul's? I could be an enemy, you know. And here you are exposing yourself and handing over a year's dangerous and profitable work. Oh, I think not. And uh, why do you think not? Because I've said everything as I should, because I seem to know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you do take me for a complete fool, don't you? Now that you've had a look at the uh, bundle, suppose you give it back to me and we'll put it and the money in the safe. And if I'd rather not? Why, then I'll just persuade you with this. Hmm. Well, that's better. But suppose I overpowered you in some way. Why are you here in this big house alone? The servants were given the night off. They'll return later. You have a great amount of confidence in yourself, madam. I do. And now, since Miriam has already seen you, I think it'd be better to go out and meet her. We'll explain that the money is to buy your support in a new propaganda campaign. You still haven't answered my question. How do you know I'm a friend of Paul's? Well, I'll tell you, Donna, I don't. Not yet. But by tomorrow night, this time, I will. It just happens that another friend will be arriving then. A friend far more important than either you or I. And he'll know just as soon as he sees you. And uh, until then? Until then, you'll be my guest. In fact, you already are my guest. Your valet will be arriving shortly. The press knows that you're spending the night with the illustrious Henry Madden. And despite what you might think, all is right with the world. You presume a great deal. Did it ever enter your head that I might have other business to attend to, even more imperative than this? And that by allowing the newspapers to know I'm here, you are ruining some very carefully laid plans? This transaction has top priority over everything. This transaction has top priority over everything. Who the devil do you think you are? My coming to get what you have is vital enough. But my method for getting the information out of the country is even more so. I hope you can see that. And if you insist upon keeping me here until tomorrow night to check my authenticity, you are going to delay, perhaps, for quite some time, the sending of your year's work. I wasn't told anything about that. Well, isn't that a shame? Why don't you put in a call to Joe and tell him your troubles? Better a delay, Donna, than a complete waste of time and energy. If you can think of a faster way in which I can check on you, all right. One of the big troubles with our organization is that you never know who you're dealing with until you take the trouble to check on everything they say and do, and sometimes it's difficult. We've gotten so efficient, we don't even know who we are. <laughs> Come, Donna. Cheer up. It's pleasant here. Frankly, I don't think you're an imposter. But if you were in my place, you'd do just what I'm doing. Yes, I would indeed. But this delay is bad. Really bad, madam. I have said all the prearranged things, given the money and... Say, uh, uh, don't you keep a file or anything like that? My files only cover people working for us in the general area. All right, all right. So you have to check and suppose I am an imposter. You've told the press I am visiting you. You'd have to let me go. <laughs> don't be naive, Donna. Of course I'd let you go. But just how far do you think you'd go before you had a tragic and irreparable accident? Now come along and meet Miriam. She's really a charming girl. Paul 
Paul Lucas, starring in the role of Stefan Donner in the proudly we hail production Edge of the Curtain, will return in just a moment for the second act. Who is the smartest woman of the year? Why, the woman who puts on that new blue uniform of the United States Air Force. She's being seen more and more around the nation these days. She's smart in another way, too. She started a great career as a WAF, one of the women in the Air Force working side by side with the men of the Air Force. She wears her Air Force blue proudly, with a sense of personal accomplishment, because she's doing a needed job. More and more young women, 18 to 34, are finding out that the smart thing to do is to get the complete details at the nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station, to put on the smart blue uniform worn by the women in the Air Force. How about you? Can you qualify? You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, we present the second act of Edge of the Curtain. Do you like it? Mm, it's lovely. But decadent, Donna, decadent. <laughs> decadent. Would you rather hear something like this? <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> Do you know what that was? Uh -uh. That was life on a communal farm in the Ukraine. That's what they want to hear. That's what I play for them. What I wear plugs in my ears when I do it. Oh, <laughs> you're priceless. You should talk to my father. He'd love you. Oh. And why? He says they're a bunch of barbarians trying to act like human beings. One day he may wake up surprised. Tell me, I'm, I'm curious. I've been everywhere in Europe, east and west, and nowhere in the world is there a country like yours where people have so much of everything. Nowhere is there an atmosphere such an, as you find here. And yet, why are the people like yourselves openly opposed to a way of living and thinking that has given you all this. Look, my father is a dictatorial, Napoleonic, narrow reactionary. Certainly he's rich, and how did he get rich? From the sweat off other people's backs. Is that what you know, or is that what you read in some book? You don't look like you ever worked a day in your life. How do you know the worker's paradise you advocate is something that the workers themselves want? It takes education. Ah, yes, education. I've seen the kind of education it takes, both by the Nazis and now your camera. You don't sound very sympathetic to what we were talking about earlier. I can work for a living without being sympathetic. I'm a musician, a neutral. I take no sides. I observe, I ask questions. You're a complete cynic as well. And your friends would even kill the beauty in it. You sound like a chauvinistic romantic, Donna. This thing is coming. It's been coming for a long time. It's a new dynamic force in the world, and I much prefer to be a part of it than to oppose it with worn-out old ideas and capitalistic slogans. Madden, there is nothing new about this force. It began with Cain and Abel. It's bigger now, that's all. Wears more window dressing, and is far more terrible. It seeks nothing more dynamic than world slavery. Claptrap. What about the little people? Little people. <laughs> now, what does that mean? Who is little and who is big on this earth? Every man is answerable to God, no matter how much power he holds, and no matter how much he abuses it. Little people, indeed. The only people who are little are the ones who have too little up here to figure it out. Well, Hank, I thought you said he was working with us. <laughs> Perhaps we have to convince him we're right, one way or the other. So far, you have convinced me of nothing. You'll pay me money to say the things you'll write. Other than that, nothing. And you, madam, are a spoiled child with a father come Are you? Who needs a good spanking. And you, sir, are an opportunist. And I am Donna, a musician who takes no sides. You certainly did a fine job of convincing her. That was the general idea. It's better than she thinks I'm not in symptom. When are you going to send her home? Oh, she's staying overnight. Had a row with her father. Does he know she comes here? Of course not. He'd probably shoot me if he did. That wouldn't be a bad idea, Madden. She's about as steady and trustworthy as the wind. 
I recommend you get rid of it. And I recommend you mind your own business. It might be well to remember in this business. The business of one is the business of all. Good night, sir. Fat in the fire, sir? Well, in rink, we don't have much time. Tomorrow evening, someone will be arriving who can identify me. Oh, and hadn't we better act now? And, uh, no doubt Amer our American friends are watching this place. They know we are here, but they won't make a move until I give them the signal. And then what? They move in, they get Madden, his files, the information. But Madden was smart enough to let the newspapers know I was staying here. My name couldn't be kept out of it. Our friends on the other side would know or at least suspect. And we'd, we would be of no more use. Uh, didn't you say Richards felt it was worth it? Only as a last resort. We haven't reached that yet. And there's another reason, too. The girl, the little idiot, doesn't know what she's mixed up in. It would ruin her and her father as well. Well, what do you suggest, sir? It's too risky sending a blinker message with a flashlight. If one of us could get out and... Yes? Who is it? Madden. Can I have a word with you? What? Is that gun necessary? Under the circumstances, yes. Back up over there, both of you. Get your hands up. Well, what kind of a game is this? A game you lost. I won't have to wait until tomorrow night now, since you've told me everything I want to know. There are three microphones in this room, all in excellent condition. Oh, my fault, sir. I didn't check. I didn't think that here. Everywhere, ring, everywhere. Well, all right, you've got us. Now what? You can't get away? It might be wise to make a deal. <laughs> what a nerve. You're through making deals. In a very short time, the whole neighborhood is going to be aroused, for Henry Madden's home is going up in flame and smoke. A frightful accident, since the great Stefan Dunner and his valet will perish in the fire. Oh, I assure you, it will look authentic. Most of the servants are in bed. And they'll have to flee for their lives. Some of them may not get out. This place is a tinderbox, and with a little gasoline to help, it'll all go up in a poof. In the confusion, I'll disappear with the papers and the money. And later, it will be thought that I, too, perish in the flames. You will make a deal. Ha! And what about your charming house guest? You know, I've been thinking about that. You're right. She doesn't fit in. We'll let her sleep. And if she gets out, that's her good luck. What do you mean, Hank? Huh? What's that gun for? I thought you were asleep. Your, your talking woke me. Hank, what's the matter? Get in there. I... Pity you aren't a sound asleep. I don't understand. It is quite simple. He's planning to burn us all up. Burn us? But why? Hank, what? We are not his friends as he thought. And you are an unnecessary risk. What? So you must have read it somewhere. The means justifies the end. Hank, have you gone mad? You thought it was an intellectual tea party, didn't you? It's too bad you have to find out differently in such a manner, but better late than never. Thank you. You, you wouldn't hurt Believe me. Believe me, Miriam, I'm sorry. The entire picture's changed. What I have to do is more important than you or even myself. What he means is that you might get in his way, and so he has to make sure that you don't. But I... This is no time for fine talk. He's going to murder the three of us for the glorious cause and for the blindness of his warped ego. Shut up. Turn around. Turn around, turn around, I'll shoot you where you stand. Hank, don't hurt me, please, please. You said you loved me. Be quiet, Miriam. That... Back over here, Donna. You're first. Don't worry, I'm not going to shoot you. If they find your body, I don't want any bullet holes in it. I'll knock you out, and that's all there'll be to it. Hank, please, please. Don't be stop. quiet, I'll gag you. Stop. All stop. right, Donna, hold it right there. It's been interesting, and now. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. Drink. Stop where you are. Everything down here is soaked in gasoline, see? What? I, I strike a match and poof! Now, get out if you can, Donna. I've got the papers and I've got the money too. And by the time I become a needle in the haystack of America, this year's work will be in Paul's hands. And you, whether you get out or not, will be exposed for what you are. I bid you, you all. Ah! That cross beam landed right on him. Yes. He was so right. This place is a tenderbox. Come on. We've got to get the girl and find a way out. It's almost out. Yes. I'll have Ring get a car and take you home. You're not going to turn me over to the police? 
You have done nothing more than be a fool. You nearly paid a terrible penalty for it. I hope this has taught you a little. This fight is not a fight of new ideas or of their wanting something better for anyone. You saw an edge of the curtain pulled back. You saw a bit of what lies underneath. There are many maddened, and there are many like you who, for one reason or other, get bound up in this thing and go blind. If this has opened your eyes, something good has been done here tonight. I'm so confused. Perhaps if you talk to your father, he might straighten you out on a few points. Where will you go now? Back to my piano, and you will forget that you were ever here, that this ever happened, that I ever talked this way to you. Is that right? Yes. Yes, Good. that's right. Now we'll take you home. I... I wondered how you managed to hit him just as he was going to strike you with the gun. I was facing the mirror. When I saw the gun raised above my head, I grabbed it and, well... He, he would have killed me, and now... And now he's dead by his own hand. May God have pity on his soul. Ring! Ring! Uh, uh, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. See if you can get a car. It's time Miss Corby went home. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. will return with a word about next week's show in just a moment. Registered nurses, the United States Air Force Medical Service offers you a great opportunity to serve your country and further your own career. Yes, you can become a commissioned officer with good pay and allowances while you receive postgraduate training in anesthesia, operating room management and techniques, nursing administration and other related fields. Nurses with special qualifications may train as flight nurses at the famous Air Force School of Aviation Medicine. For complete information, write to the Surgeon General, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Paul Lucas. Edge of the Curtain was written by DeWitt Cobb. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Paul Lucas. We cordially invite you to be with us again over the same station next week for Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled Weekend at Colon Cubs. We hope you'll join us then. Until next week, goodbye. <laughs>